George Frisbee Hoare August 29, 1826, to September 30, 1904, was a prominent American politician and United States Senator from Massachusetts. Hoare was born in Concord, Massachusetts. He was a member of an extended family that was politically prominent in 18th and 19th century New England. <laughs> Early life As a youth, he was educated at a boarding school in Waltham, Massachusetts, run by Samuel and Sarah Bradford Ripley. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political and legal career. Hoare graduated from Harvard University in 1846 and Harvard Law School in 1849. He was admitted to the bar, and settled in Worcester, Massachusetts where he practiced law before entering politics. Initially a member of the Free Soil Party, he joined the Republican Party shortly after its founding, and was elected to the Massachusetts House of Representatives 1852, and the Massachusetts Senate 1857. In 1865, Hoare was one of the founders of the Worcester County Free Institute of Industrial Science, now the Worcester Polytechnic Institute. He represented Massachusetts as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from 1869 through 1877, then served in the U.S. Senate until his death. He was a Republican, who generally avoided party partisanship and did not hesitate to criticize other members of his party whose actions or policies he believed were in error. Hoare was long noted as a fighter against political corruption, and campaigned for the rights of African Americans and Native Americans. He argued in the Senate in favor of women's suffrage as early as 1886. He opposed the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, describing it as, "...nothing less than the legalization of racial discrimination." However, he also believed that Portuguese and Italian immigrants were unfit for U.S. citizenship. As a member of the Congressional Electoral Commission, he was involved with settling the highly disputed U.S. presidential election, 1876. He authored the Presidential Succession Act of 1886, and in 1880 he was chairman of the 1880 Republican National Convention. Unlike many of his Senate colleagues, Hoare was not a strong advocate for an American intervention into Cuba in the late 1890s. On December 1897, he met with native Hawaiian leaders opposed to the annexation of their nation and presented the K petitions to Congress which defeated William McKinley's attempt to annex the Republic of Hawaii with a treaty. After this, the islands were annexed by means of joint resolution, called the Newlands Resolution. After the Spanish-American War, Hoare became one of the Senate's most outspoken opponents of the imperialism of the McKinley administration. He called for independence for the Philippines, and denounced the Philippine-American War in the following terms. You have sacrificed nearly 10,000 American lives. The flower of our youth. You have devastated provinces. You have slain uncounted thousands of the people you desire to benefit. You have established reconcentration camps. Your generals are coming home from their harvest bringing sheaves with them, in the shape of other thousands of sick and wounded and insane to drag out miserable lives, wrecked in body and mind. You make the American flag in the eyes of a numerous people the emblem of sacrilege in Christian churches, and of the burning of human dwellings, and of the horror of the water torture. Your practical statesmanship which disdains to take George Washington and Abraham Lincoln or the soldiers of the Revolution or of the Civil War as models, has looked in some cases to Spain for your example. I believe—nay, I know—that in general our officers and soldiers are humane. But in some cases they have carried on your warfare with a mixture of American ingenuity and Castilian cruelty. Your practical statesmanship has succeeded in converting a people who three years ago were ready to kiss the hem of the garment of the American and to welcome him as a liberator, who thronged after your men when they landed on those islands with benediction and gratitude, into sullen and irreconcilable enemies, possessed of a hatred which centuries cannot eradicate. Hoare pushed for and served on the Lodge Committee investigating alleged, and later confirmed, war crimes in the Philippine-American War. He also denounced the U.S. intervention in Panama. In addition to his political career, Hoare was active in the American Historical Association and the American Antiquarian Society, serving terms as president of both organizations. He was elected a member of the American Antiquarian Society in 1853, and served as vice president from 1878 to 1884, and then served as president from 1884 to 1887. 
He was a regent of the Smithsonian Institution in 1880, and a trustee of the Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology. Through his efforts, the lost manuscript of William Bradford's of Plymouth Plantation 1620 an important founding document of the United States, was returned to New England, after being discovered in Fulham Palace, London, in 1855. Hoare was elected a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1901. His autobiography, Autobiography of Seventy Years, was published in 1903. It first appeared in serial form in Scribner's magazine. Hoare enjoyed good health until June 1904. He died in Worcester, and was buried in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, Concord. After his death, a statue of him was erected in front of Worcester's City Hall, paid for by public donations. <laughs> Hoare family and relations In 1853, Hoare married Mary Louisa Spur 1831 In 1862, he married Ruth Ann Miller 1830 With his first wife, he was the father of a son, Rockwood Hoare, and a daughter, Mary 1854 With his second wife he was the father of a daughter, Alice 1863 through his mother, Sarah Sherman, G.F. Hoare was a grandson of prominent political figure, Roger Sherman and Sherman's second wife, Rebecca Minot Prescott. Roger Sherman signed the Articles of Confederation, United States Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution. G. F. Hoare's father, Samuel Hoare, was a prominent lawyer who served on the Massachusetts State Senate and the United States House of Representatives. G. F. Hoare's brother Ebenezer Rockwood Hoare was an Associate Justice of the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, one of Ulysses S. Grant's Attorneys General, and a nominee to the U.S. Supreme Court. G. F. Hoare's first cousin Roger Sherman Baldwin was Governor of Connecticut and a U.S. Senator, and William Maxwell Everts was U.S. Secretary of State, U.S. Attorney General and a U.S. Senator. He was the uncle of Massachusetts State Representative Sherman Hoare, and the great uncle of Massachusetts State Senator and Assistant Attorney General Roger Sherman Hoare. See also Fulham Palace List of United States Congress members who died in office 1900 Notes <laughs>